Howdy, Beefalo Bard here, and welcome, and welcome back. Alright, so I'm doing a bunch of streams today, going over the basics of getting used to Unreal Engine 4, and creating your first project. I said your first project, it's going to suck, you're going to delete it, your second, third, fifth, ninth, whatever, don't worry about it, it's a thing. So... In the last video, we wrapped up with adding in a new asset pack that was free from the marketplace. So you had to get that and add it to your project. And it is the Broadcast Studio. So I'm going to go to the Maps folder. And we're going to run the Overview Map. Just going to double click on it and it's going to load the map in. So this is my first time looking at it other than in the marketplace so it's going to take a few minutes to open and compile creators and that kind of stuff but you're going to be seeing it the first time I see it all right almost there checking my mini discords okay um not the map that I thought it was going to be, but we can still take a look at it. These are the, some of the items that are actually in the pack. As you can see, while it's uh, compiling the shaders, the items all have the universal grid material on it. So it just takes a couple minutes for it to compile the shaders. It's all based on the speed of your computer and you know your video card, your RAM, your processor, and all that jazz. So if you've got a potato, then it may take a little longer. Um, if you got a really good high-speed machine, then it might go f even faster. So while we're on this map and letting these uh, shaders compile, we'll just fly around and take a look at some of the different items. And, you know, it'd be cool to set them up and play around with them. I see a couch, a couple chairs, scenery prop items... Um, track systems for a trolley for a uh, camera. Interesting that it has three wheels. Um, these are glass platforms. That's kind of cool. Railings. Pillars and wall sections. Floor platforms. A um, couple televisions. That's kind of cool some cables that go up to the sky I guess for hanging you know that is a track system I guess um, looks like some wooden rails I guess it's a glass table I guess if you wanted it to be some flowers some lamps kinda cool alright so let's actually go to the showcase maybe that's the one we're looking for and we'll let that one load They left the, the grid on top, but a gray material on the sides of the, uh, the the really, really thick floor. So what I'm going to do in this particular video is, since we've got this one in here, we're going to import some other animations that I have in my Discord channel, free to uh, obtain. I did not make them. They were free to download. So, ah, cool. Okay, so we got individual set areas. Kind of cool. But there's no way to get between them because there's no floor there. So what I'll probably end up doing is just throwing down a, um, a BSP geometry just to create a, um, a walkable floor. Oh, really? And that's how you did it? Wow. Um, let's go with zero, zero. Thank you. So get rid of all those rotations. And we want to get it a little bit wider. So we want to change the X axis. Axis. We'll double that. It's okay if there's a small gap there. And I want to change the y-axis to 
Mm. Let's try 3,000. That's good enough. And yay, noisy neighbor. There is no player start, so let's go to world settings. Game mode, third person game mode, player underscore base. That's good, and we need a basic and a player start. And he's facing the wrong direction, so let's go ahead and rotate him. The reason why I know he's facing the wrong direction, let's just face him this way, is that little blue arrow, light blue arrow, that's going to be the direction that we're actually facing. So now, we're there. Got some nice dynamic lighting in here of sorts. The chairs are kind of close, so we won't be able to sit down on those in the set. But, need a lighting rebuild. over here to this one. We'll be able to set up this chair to sit down in and the sofa to sit down in. That one, the chair is kind of close. We could set it up to where me. We can sit down on that one. I might be able to make that work. Got an idea for that. And the other set, we got the one chair right here and this one. So it's a little higher, but we can make that work as well. Um, Cool trick you can do with these. The televisions have the Unreal Engine logo on there. If you have a, a video that you want to actually put on there, you can put a video, you can put another still screen if you want. So you can actually have, with or without audio, you could have videos playing there. Not in this video, but cool enough anyway. So even though they all have the Unreal Engine logo on it, doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. Let's go ahead and save all. Save selected. And let's go ahead and do a lighting build only. While it's doing that, we can talk about what we're going to do. And the sit down in the chair part, there are animations in my Discord channel. In the BBG demos page, chair underscore anims dot RAR. It's a RAR file. Um, if you're not familiar with WinRAR, it's free for the demo. And you can use the demo forever. There's also some weapon sounds. Um, the individual separated animations, if you don't want to download the RAR file, you can get them separately. I think those are the older versions and they need some corrections to them. And the versions that I have, if they are not the correct ones, then whatever, I'll fix them. So while we're waiting on the lighting build, which can take a little while, go to my character. We've got a blueprints folder. And I thought I had all the other structures in here, but I guess not. So in my characters, I'm going to create a new folder called Animations. And just because, and see there is. Why? I swear I, I created these beforehand and they're not there. Alright, so I'm going to create another new folder and it's going to be called Chair and inside here is where I'm going to want to copy those files. So you're going to want to go to where wherever you download them to. And I'm just getting ready to copy these in. And I'm pretty sure that I'm getting ready to copy in the wrong ones. <laughs> but all I'm going to do is, and sorry, I'm working on a different monitor here is I'm going to grab all three of them. If you don't have multiple monitors, which I suggest that you do, you can kind of do it this way. Select all three of them, just drag them over, and drop them directly into the scene. And then you can minimize that and get rid of it. I'm actually just going to go ahead and put it back on the other monitor and minimize it. Now, skeleton-wise, these are going to be automatically mapped to the UV4 mannequin skeleton, so you don't have to worry about converting anything. They're just going to work. And then, import all. So we're halfway done with our lighting. So now we have that. We can go ahead and hit save all. And we have a sitting idle animation. A stand-up animation and a sit-down animation. So that's great. That's going to work. So 
So those are our animations that we're going to tie into for when we actually sit down. Um, we're going to need to create, we're going to let this wrap up, a little bit of architecture of some variables and so forth. And we're going to actually do this the fun way of setting it up in the animation blueprint so that um, it will actually be functional no matter what. And I'm not going to modify the sofa or the chairs individually. I'm going to create what's what I call the sit spot. And it's going to be something that I can drag into the map. Um, hey, I didn't create that. Desk mid. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. That's their problem, not mine. So that um, once it saves, we'll go back in here and play on the map. So we walk in, and even though these chairs are pushed up really, really close, we'll have to do something special on that particular version of it. Um, but for sitting down over here, since there's room for three, three cushions, I'm only going to make it room for two. So you're kind of be splitting the difference, and then you can sit down at this one. And this is going to be a prime example of trying to pay attention to what you're doing and how to actually make it work. So what we need to do is we need to know that, A, a we are close enough to the chair that we should be able to sit down. And then we need to turn our character, our, our body, so that we're facing the correct direction. So then we can start sitting down, and then we can do the sitting idle animation. And then when we press the key again, we want to stand back up. So we're going to do that in a method of flip-flop. So I'm going to go to my Gadgets folder, and first thing I'm going to do is in Blueprints, I'm going to right-click Blueprint Class and Actor, and I'm going to call this the Sit underscore Spot. Doing this in multiplayer takes a little bit of doing to get it just right, so that you're making sure that um, you're not sitting in somebody's lap, in other words. Um, you have to make sure it's occupied and you're, you know, we'll worry about that when we get into multiplayer replication. So in here, I'm going to click off of that. I'm going to add in a couple components. The first one's going to be an arrow, and that's going to be important. And click off of it, add another component of a box collision, and you can rename them if you want. I'm not going to. I'm actually going to take that and move it up by 30, which is going to put it on the ground. I'm going to take the arrow, and I'm going to have to readjust the arrow location. I'm going to move it up to 60, and we'll move it back to here, to negative 30. We're going to readjust that arrow position a couple times to get it where we want it. So, what we're going to do here is delete everything compile and save and then on our box we're going to right click add event on component begin overlap and other actor we only want this to worry with our player which I called player underscore base so we, we just get a cast two. we did that from the other actor and it'll automatically plug in both at the same time so it's a nice little shortcut and we're going to right click Add event on component end overlap. Now we can also just do this and control W or control C, control V for copy and paste. Either one will work. And then we're going to manually connect those pins. So this is only going to affect our player character. So let's go ahead and open our player blueprint right there. And we are going to create some variables and conditions and everything else. What we want to do is when we press the letter E, we want to be able to sit in a chair. So keyboard E. Scroll up, and there we go. Keyboard E. And that's going to be our starting point for sitting in the chair. We walk over. We need to know first, are we at the chair? So at chair question mark boolean so we're asking a question are we there so we need a branch node so we can ask the question are we at the chair this is where it gets fun we're setting up conditions are we at the chair 
If the answer is yes, then we're going to do our events. If it is no, we're going to do nothing whatsoever. Now, you can do this a couple different ways. Um, we also need to take in consideration that we want to press it one time and do something, press it again and do something else. So I'm going to drag off from pressed and type in flip. I'm going to add a flip flop node. And this is not a reference to the stylish footwear that you wear in the summertime. Um, we're asking this to, when we press E the first time, we're going to do this. We press it again, we're going to do this. So we can actually double up on that with a branch and do this. So we're using the same condition. Are we at the chair? Yes or no. Um, we're asking it when we press it the first time. We're asking it again when we press it the second time. So we're going to do that. We're leaving this defaulted at not checked because if we're not at the chair, we don't care. So what we need to do is set at chair from our player reference. So now, whenever we are there, we're setting this variable to be true when we're overlapped with it, and then we're setting it to be false when we're not there. So checked means yes, unchecked means no. So we can also do a verification to make sure that it works. We can type in a print text and at chair and type in not at chair. Just so we can have a visible representation of us being at the chair. And just so we're not worried about all this, we're going to make sure we do a save all, everything is good. We go back to our test map, just so we have a blank reference. And I'm going to go ahead and remove our stuff from the last video. We don't need it. That was our pain pad and our med kits, how ugly they were. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the broadcast studios and go to meshes and find one of the chairs as a visual reference. So let's grab this and we will put that at zero, zero, and zero. And since our player is walking up this way, I'm going to rotate it around 180. So if we hit play, we can see that we have a chair and nothing's going to happen because we haven't added the sit spot in just yet. So we go back to our gadgets folder, blueprints, sit spot. What we want to do is position that arrow and position this. So it's going to be zero and zero, and then we can move it forward so that the box collision is just touching the chair. And again, we're going to have to remove that red arrow a few times, or for the seesaw action there. So if we hit play now, we can't see the little box anymore while we're in, in here. So we're at the chair, not at chair. So we can see that the box collision is actually reporting back correctly. So now that we can actually do this, we can get a certain set of events. And we can make this bigger if we want to, um, smaller if we want to, but I would do that in the blueprint and not in the map. Now, if you need to make adjustments up and down and forward and backwards to a certain extent, you can move the sit spot so that you can use one universal thing to work for multiple chairs. You don't have to create a new chair for every time you want to sit in a piece of furniture. So you can do it this way or you can actually change the static mesh of the chair and do the eh. but this is the easiest way of setting up a sitable chair system that you can put anywhere the side of a pool, um, a wall, whatever. This is just a universal area that you can sit down in. So we know that that works so we can get rid of those and we need to do a couple different things, add some variables in. So the first one we want to know is we want to know that the arrow is going to be the location for our butt to sit in. So I'm going to get a reference to my arrow just by a left click and drag it in. We're only worried about this on the begin overlap. We don't have to do anything on, on that. So we need to create a new variable 
and call this our sit location and we're gonna make this to be a vector actually no we're gonna make this to be a transform and I'll show you why here in just a second because it is a transform we're going to have a location, a rotation, and a scale. We're not going to modify the scale, but we need the location and rotation, and if we've got one variable that can contain both of them, why not? So let's go ahead and grab the arrow reference and get world transform. So now we get the transform of that arrow, we get its location and its direction, the arrow is pointing, and we need to create a variable in which to make that work. So hmm, we need a new variable. We're going to call this our sit transform. And again, we're going to make that into a transform. Compile and save. Okay. So now we can wait for Unreal Engine 4 to do its thing so I can start working again. <sighs> Thank you. Um, now we can drag from our player and set sit transform and plug the orange to the orange connect the executable and now we're setting a variable in our player for it to know where to park its butt okay so now if we go back to our player and we're going to move things around quite a bit so I'm just going to drag that down there so we we'll press E the first time we are at the chair we know we're at the chair, so we need to perform an action. And we want to set the actor in a new location and, and rotation. Set actor location and rotation. And we're going to run this as a teleport. You see we have location and rotation there. We need to get our transform, and then we need to break it. So we drag from here, we look down here, it says break transform. It's now going to go ahead and give us our location and our rotation. On the target, we may actually have to come back in and get a reference to self. Um, sometimes this works normal, sometimes it doesn't. Just type in self and get reference to self. So we're going to set our actor's location and rotation to match that of where our butt needs to go. So if I come over here to sit down in the chair, notice it's in the ground. So that's no bueno. We're stuck. Oh no. So that tells me that my arrow is in the wrong location. So now I can grab my arrow and Let's move it up by 30, and we'll move it forward by 20, or by 10. So it's now at negative 20. So now if I come back in here, go over to my chair, we're not in the ground anymore. We're facing the correct direction, and we need to be able to sit down now, so we need to perform an animation. So, we're still going to probably have to adjust a few things here. And we also need to create another new variable is sitting and I want to question mark on the end we're going to change this into a boolean and compile and save and now when we're doing this we are setting this variable to be true All right. and then here when we hit the key again we're setting it to be false Now, another thing we need to take into account is we don't want our player to be able to move and walk around and do things, so we need to stop our movement. So let's get a reference to our character movement, and we need to set movement mode to leave it default, it will be none. So now we can no longer walk, we can't move. And then down here, we want to do the same basic thing and get a reference to our character movement 
set movement mode plug that in but this time I want to change that over to walking so now we can resume walking so let's test that come over sit down we're in the wrong location again so why did it change don't know it's one of the mysteries of life the um, the collision on the chair may be something that's affecting it so we'll, we'll address that as we need to so the next thing we need to do is actually perform the animations so we're gonna move on to the animation blueprints in this case it's still located in the mannequin folder animations third person and in BP we're gonna double click on that and open this up you can go ahead and close this first arrow and then click on anim graph we're going to do something that's not necessary right now, but it will be later. Just going to make some room right here, and I'm going to drag from result. I'm going to type in slot, S-L-O-T. You're only going to have one option, and it's going to be slot, default slot. And then reconnect your little end together, and that's going to be fine. So now, if we want to add in an animation montage, we're going to need that in there. Something we'll cover later. So let's click on default, and this is where we're going to do our operations, but we need to do some things in the event graph first. First off, it annoys the crap out of me how this is organized, so bear with my OCDs. But we'll look at what they say here. See if pawn owner is valid. Okay, great. I'm going to delete that comment block. I'm going to move things around so that they look a little bit neater. Is valid. Okay, that's great. We can leave that in there the way it is. We don't want the comment blocks on anything because we know what these are. If not, just read them. They're pretty self-explanatory. We're getting our movement component and we're checking to see if we're falling. And if we are, then we're setting is in here to true. Okay. And this is for setting our speed. Something for another day. That, that, and that. So now this is much cleaner and easier to look at and we're going to continue from there. We're going to go from the end of speed and we're going to cast to our player. Cast to player underscore base and for our object reference we can actually get it from try get pawn owner and drag this all the way over to here and we're good. So as player base we need to get are we sitting get is sitting so get is sitting and then we're of course going to need a branch node connect that to here and we're going to need to make a variable here inside of this blueprint so under variables we're going to add a new one and we're just going to call that sitting so now, if our player has is sitting as true, we're going to set is sitting to true. Plug that in here, and then plug false into this with it actually unchecked. So we're setting a variable here in this blueprint to let us know that um, what our condition is. Then we can go back to our default tab and we only want this to work when we're idle and not moving. So, first thing we need to do is we'll drag down from here and we'll add a new state. And we're going to call this sit down clown or sit down. And I'm just going to move this around and make it neat. So, sit down. Double click on it and what we're going to do is we are standing and we want to sit down so we're going to grab that animation of stand to sit plug it in and that's what we want to do come back to default and we have this little double way arrow right there first off we need to know the condition what do we need to have in order for us to be able to do this animation to tell us to be able to sit down so I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to grab sitting and just plug it right in so if we are sitting is true, 
then we can enter that transition. And then after we get done doing that animation of sitting down, we need to add another state. And we're just going to call this sitting, or it could be sitting idle, whatever you want to call it. And let's actually drag these down a little bit more. So this one is we're just sitting idle. So we're going to grab the sitting idle animation, drop it in here, connect the little dudes together, and that's it for that. We can actually go back to default and our transition. How do we go from here to here? Well, what we need to do is move over here a little bit, and we need to right-click and type in time remaining. And we want time remaining ratio stand to sit. So we want to know that, drag off from here, type in float less than, and then plug this in, and we need to change this to 0.1. So if there's less than 0.1 of a second left in the animation, we can now snap into the sitting idle animation. But now we need to be able to get back from there to there. So what we need to do is create another state, which is stand up. So we can actually tie in this animation. Come on, double click on it. And we want to sit to stand is the animation that we're actually going to run. Plug that in. Go to our transition. And we're going to do sitting. But we did that before, so we need to do another version of this. So we'll drag from sitting and type in not B for not boolean. And that's what we want. Are we sitting? No. Are we not sitting? So we're not sitting. Now we can do this, this particular animation. And then for us to be able to go back to, I know this is confusing, to go back into our regular idle, walk, run, whatever, we need to, like we did before, time remaining in the sit to stand animation needs to be less than 0.1 and there we can go back into that regular animation. So, quick recap. We're in our regular walk around animation system and we want to sit down, so now we do the sit down animation. Now, when we're done doing this one, we can sit idle. When we're no longer wanting to sit down, we can run the stand up animation. When we're done with that one, we go back to our regular walking. So this is going to need some tweaking, so bear in mind. We'll walk over here, hit that, and there we go. We can slide it back a little bit. The height seems okay. We can't move, so we're stuck in this position. We hit the E key, and see we hopped a little bit, and then we slid. Show you how to fix that in just a minute. But now we can walk around and do our thing again. Walk back over here, we can sit down. So, let's actually take the sit spot arrow. Move it back just a little bit, see if that helps. There, much better. Now, that weird plop where he just jumps forward. Apparently there's an issue with the animation and I thought I had the updated version in there. So in the sit to stand animation, we'll take a look at it and it looks fine here. Well, what's the problem? Well, if you click on root, look how far forward his root is from here. So it's not centered up. So we're gonna hit pause and we're gonna scroll it back to here, make sure we select root, hit key and apply, and then we're going to hit this and we're going to move this back to as close as zero as possible. Hit key, apply, save, and then we can hit play again. It looks the same, but he's no longer up here. So 
let's close that and let's actually take a look see what it looks like it's a minor fix so we sit down just fine we stand up we still hop a little bit um, I think that's partially because of the um, the collision on the chair I don't know anything about this chair it's the first time using it so it's a minor issue now you notice we, we were able to to walk and move around before we're done with the animation so we don't want that to happen so we can actually look mouse over I don't have to click anything just mouse over the animation the sequence length is what we're looking for which is 2.2083333 so we're just going to do 2.208 for sequence length okay and then we're going to go to our player and before we allow our, our player to start walking again all we're going to do is drag this over a little bit and drag from set and we're going to do a delay and we said that was two point what I'm old and forget things 208 208 we can actually just round this up to 2.22 make it just a hair longer so now we're preventing our character from being able to walk until we have actually had enough time for it to complete that animation so we're just preventing our player from walking until they don't need to be walking so come over here we sit down can't move we stand up can't move until we're done and then we can walk so yeah that jump thing I believe that's going to be in the actual um, chairs collision. We can bump that forward just a hair. Now this sit spot is going to work anywhere where we want to sit. And stand up. Still a little jumpy, but uh, like I said, I, I think that's going to be in the collision of the chair. So if we want that to work on, let's say... the sofa and let's just spin that around oh uh, let's see what was the other chair that we had got a couple of microphones that's kind of cool I have no real need for this but yeah, it's a pretty cool pack and the host chair and we'll spin that around 180 now I can actually take this sit spot and I can All I did was control C and control V to, to paste a new one in and just position it right by it. And I'll put another one over here. And why not? Another one right here. Let's move the chair over a little bit. And let's move the chair back. Move this up. Now, we have this chair is going to work just fine. We can sit down. We can stand up. Sit down. Yeah, I think it has to do with the collisions on here. I'll have to actually look at the collisions. We can sit over here if we want to. We could set it up to where there's three of them here, but I find that um, it's best to have them separated a little bit so that no part of your character is connecting between two different ones oh my well first off the chair is hovering change our snapping to five let's see if we can get it on the ground and let's see if that helps a little bit our chair was hovering in the air there we go now our feet are off the ground there's a couple things you can do you can actually rescale the height of your chair the z-axis of the chair those sofas seem like they're I don't know, seem like they're floating too. Um, grab both of those and drop them down by five. Our feet are still in here. Like I said, you could actually lower it down some, or you can actually just um, scale it a little bit different. Yeah, see, that helps a little bit with the, the jumping. 
Come over here and sit down. Be nightfall. Now, that's sitting down. What we didn't do, and what we said we were going to do, is kill our player. I know. Go from sitting casually to um, killing him. So if we want to go back to the other map and actually save all this stuff in there, we could. Well, we need to get some animations. So as I mentioned before about getting from the marketplace, it's free. The animation starter pack. I am going to not get it, but all you have to do, because I have these separated, I don't have to download the entire thing, um, grab this. I probably should so I can show you guys the correct way. Um, animation starter pack, I want to add to project, select our project, and add to project. It's only 25 megabytes. Um, the thing we're going to run into is as we do that, it's going to include its own skeleton. It's the exact same as the regular UE4 mannequin skeleton, but it's going to be in a different location. It's going to give us a bunch of animations like aim spaces we'll get into later, blend spaces, again, get into later, um, our crouching animations, um, our death animations, things like that. So, the problem we're going to run into here is now that we have two different UE4 mannequin skeletons that are identical to each other and named the same as each other, it's one of those things where what I want to do and what the game wants to do is going to be two different things because I'm not going to use any of these in the conventional fashion. So what I'm going to do for right now is I've got a bunch of different death types. I'm just going to use death one as an example. And I'm going to open up my uh, character folder animations. And I'm going to create another new folder called death. You don't have to do it this way. You can pile them all in one. I like having them separate so I know what's what. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to right click on it. And retarget anim assets. Duplicate anim assets. Uh, before we can do that, we actually have to set up something on our character. So in the mannequin folder, character mesh. We need to go into our mannequin skeleton. And this is Manny. We want to go to retarget manager. If you do not have this tab, then all you have to do is press that button and it will create that. Set up rig. We need to do this. The rig is already there. So select humanoid rig. Hit save, and we're done. Close. We can close our animation blueprint for now. Sit spot for now. We'll leave our player up. Make sure we'll close our player for now. We'll open it back up in a minute. But Okay, we're done with that. Now we need to go to the animation starter pack. And UE4 mannequin skull, or UE4 mannequin, go to the mesh. It's exactly the same one. So I, I personally I already have these animations exported that I can just drop them back in and they're already set up to work with less issue. But we're going to do the same thing. Set up rig and select humanoid rig and save. Now we can minimize that. Go back to our death animation. Right click. And this is one way of doing death. Another is to ragdoll. We'll worry about doing ragdolls later. For now we're just going to do a death animation. Um, duplicate animation asset and retarget. I'm going to retarget it to the UE4 mannequin skeleton, the only option we have. And we're going to replace the name death underscore one tab, and we're just going to call this death. And then we're going to hit change. We're going to go to our character folder, animation, death, select OK and then we can hit the retarget button and it's done. Save all, save selected, double click and we have a new animation for death. Okay, we're dead. Or there, might as well go ahead and hit apply to asset. I don't know why it doesn't do it automatically, it's not a huge deal, but 
whatever. So we're going to do this the simplest way possible without having to go through the animation blueprint and creating all kind of weird conditions and this and that and everything else. We just want our player to die. And then we're going to go back to being normal again. But let's think the process through really quickly. What do we need to do? And where do we need to respawn? If we're standing on the pain pad, it killed us. Well, we don't want to respawn on top of the pain pad, let it keep killing us. If we're in a big fire and we don't want to be sitting in the fire whenever we respawn, so we need to know where to respawn. Ah. No coffee this time, it's orange soda. Last video was tea, the first video was coffee. Yeah, I, I need to be drinking water, I know. Alright, so we can minimize the mannequin folder, we're done with that one. Uh, we're done with the gadgets folder for now. So in our character, let's get our player open. Now we got all this stuff right here. This was for our sit in the chair. So let's go ahead and sit in chair. And it was essentially a movement type. So let's go ahead and give it that blue color. Make room for it, and let's drag it into here, and let's get rid of that check mark. So now we know that it's in its correct home. We know where to find it. It's a movement type because we're performing animations. Death is going to be done through our damage system, so it's going to be done over here. So, what do we need as a condition? We need to know that we are dead. And we set this up before here that um, we're checking to see if our health is less than zero. We're going to change that. We're going to do less than or equal to. So if your health is less than or equal to zero, then we need to set our health to zero so we can we know that we're baseline zero. And then we need to create a custom event and just type in custom and as you're typing in custom you'll see it's already on add custom event hit enter and we're going to call this death so whatever we put in here needs to be run from here so when we can now just type in death and put in that custom event wherever we want death to happen it can happen right there so what happens is what we're going to do now Compile and save. We're dead. We need to first off um, do something. We need to do the animation. So we get a reference to our mesh and we want to, and we can do this as an animation or as an animation montage. So now we'll start off with the simple way of just doing an animation. So play animation, simple enough. And we'll just plug this in. The animation that we're going to play is. If you don't want to sort through the whole list, you can start typing it in. We named it differently. So it's called death. It is not going to be looping. We just need it to run one time. Play that animation and we'll see what happens there. We need to put our pain pad back in so that we can kill ourselves. So we come in here and well, first off, we set this pain pad up to where we can adjust the amount of damage that it does. We're just going to go ahead and change it to 100 and just kill us. We only have 100 health to begin with. So as soon as we walk over, doo -doo 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 -doo, boom, we're dead. But we're still able to move. So that's the next thing we need to do is stop our movement so that we can't just sit here and just keep doing it and keep sliding around. And we're going to do something cool with this as well that I don't normally do. And we're going to add another camera in so that we can actually look down on ourselves and see, hey, we're dead, you know. So let's go ahead and get a reference to our character movement. And we want to uh, set movement mode. Now it's already defaulted to none, so that's good. We don't want to move. We just want to sit still. So, we're just moseying along, boom, we're dead. 
We're still able to pan our camera around, but we can't move anywhere or go anywhere. What we want to do is have a death camera so it's now looking down over the top of us. We see ourselves in that sprawled out location. And this is just one of those things where adding a little extra detail into something is cool. So, got all this stuff right here. Make sure you're not clicked on anything. Add component, camera, and death camera. And I'm going to rotate it. Negative 90. And I'm going to put it up in the air a little bit. Uh, let's try it at 300. Actually, let's put it at 250, and we'll, we'll adjust it as we need to. And we'll probably want to spin it around, too. Um, another thing we need to do is scroll down and uncheck Auto Activate. We don't want that camera on at all until we want it on. So now, in this, let's give it a mild delay so that we can kind of make it smoother. Delay... Point two, so let's give it... Um, three quarters of a second, 0.75. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to grab our follow camera reference and we are going to deactivate and we're going to grab reference to our death camera and activate. So we're basically turning off our regular camera and turning on our new camera. So we're good to go. Everything is normal. We're walking around. And... Oh, crap. Okay, so the camera's wrong. So let's turn it around the other direction. And we'll just go back to our viewport and our death camera. And let's rotate it 180 degrees. And let's see how it looks now, and then we, we'll probably want to slide it over a little bit. Um, so, we're dead. Yep. Yeah. We want to go ahead and move it this way. Let's try it at a negative 100. And we're at 250. So that's going to, should get us just right. So we come over here and, holy crap, we're dead. And now we're looking at our corpse. This sucks. We're dead. Our health is zero. We can't do anything. That's great. We can't even move our camera anymore. We have no control. This sucks. So, what do we do now? We need to respawn. <sighs> Where do we respawn? Well, let's, um come back over here to our command stuff and we want to add in a new feature here and it's going to be off of our event begin play and let's go ahead and get this chair stuff done and get a new category and move our chair stuff into that new category so we can minimize it and keep it clean now we want to create a new variable check point and we're going to to start off with we're gonna make this a vector and on event begin play and we're gonna do this as a function again so we'll just drag down from here and we're going to get actor location Ooh. Um, it doesn't like that um, get actor location and we want to set our checkpoint to that so when we first start and we'll need this up here in just a minute we're going to get our location and we're going to set that as our checkpoint location which is where we're going to end up responding to until we actually have a new checkpoint so now I can grab these two select them right click collapse to function and we're going to set checkpoint. Now we can actually use this like a custom event if we ever need to. So now we've created that respawn location. 
So we can go back over here to our death functionality and we're going to set up our respawn location. But let's go ahead and we're dead. Let's add in a delay. How long do we want to sit there before we we start that? Let's go ahead and we'll just set it for five seconds. So we're going to pause for five seconds and then we're going to respawn. So what we're going to have to do is set actor actor location since we only have this as a vector we're setting our actor location to this new location and it's going to be a teleport we need to then change our cameras back so we need to get our death camera and deactivate so we turn off our death cam this is pretty much going to happen instantaneously and then we're going to yeah, let's leave that back down here get our follow camera which is our normal camera and we're going to activate that we need to undo the fact that we're laying there dead and we need to then get a reference to our mesh and we need to set anim instance class because we need to have class and get off our ass and that was our third person animation blueprint and then we need to be able to move again but I'm gonna put a mild delay in here we're just gonna run delay and we're gonna instantaneously pop back up onto our feet so I'm gonna leave this in here at a point a quarter of a second not 25 seconds 0.25 I could have left it at 0.2 I didn't have to change it but I did and then we're going to get a reference to our character movement so we can start walking again and set movement mode there set movement mode plug that in change that to walking and we will have our respawn so what did we forget does everything work come over here bam we stepped on a landmine we're dead we're looking at our dead ass corpse and then five seconds later we're back to normal again uh oh our health is still zero so that's one thing we did forget we need to get um our health from player stats set health to 100 So now we should be good to go. We're running over here. Bam, we hit a landmine. We get our death cam. And five seconds later, hey, we're good to go. We can walk around. We're back full health again. And we're not going to step on. Oh, we step on the same landmine again. So wait five seconds. We respawn. And there we go. Now, what if we're wanting to add in a checkpoint system? And we'll use this as our wrap-up for, for this video since we're at the hour mark. Um, we're going to set up a checkpoint system and I am going to in my gadgets folder create a new blueprint class actor checkpoint simple enough now I am going to add in a click off of it and then box collision and we don't need to worry about changing anything on the name of it we can, um, don't need to. We're going to raise it up by 30. And then we're going to go in here and delete everything. Compost and save. Right click on our box collision. And on component begin overlap from our other actor. Cast to player underscore base, which is our player character. And we're going to set checkpoint 
of the actual variable, not of the function, but we're going to set checkpoint and we need to get a reference to our box, get world location, and plug that in. Now, what I'm going to do with this is for now, I am going to, well, you don't have to worry about it, but um, for now, I'm going to uncheck hidden in game. Normally, like with our, our thing right here, we don't see the little box that's over the top of this. We can see it now. Hopefully you can see it on the screen. Um, but when we go into play, we don't actually see that box. It's just there. So I'm going to leave it on so we can actually see it. So I'm going to grab my checkpoint and put this over here. And it doesn't matter where I put it. Um, but zero and because I have so many OCDs I gotta put it at a set location and we'll do it a thousand so this is our, our current new location and it doesn't matter where it is we can scale it up if we want to make it fill a doorway um, an archway a racing gate system or whatever. Now we go in here to play. We can actually see it. If we die now, we're going to respawn back where we initially spawned because that was set up in the event to begin play on our character. But as we're going through the map, do 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 do. Hey, here's a checkpoint. And if I continue on, and oh crap, I just died. We're now going to respawn at our checkpoint. You can actually set up an arrow and um, because we are in our death, we use this right here, we set our actor location. We can add in our rotation as well if we wanted to add in another variable and add in another component. So if we look in our viewport and add in a new component of an arrow and I'm just gonna raise it up a little bit just so it, it won't be sticking in the ground now if we look at it here on the map we can see that we have an arrow doesn't matter that it's scrunched up we can see which which way it's pointing um, go back to our checkpoint and in our event graph we can get a reference to our arrow and get world rotation Um, save. We need to create a new variable in here and we will call this our checkpoint rotation. And we're going to make that a rotator. So now we can actually drag from our player set checkpoint rotator or rotation, plug it in and do that and we could have used instead of set actor location we could have used set actor ro uh, location and rotation so let's try that set actor location and rotation and then just connect that back in there move you back down we could move it apart if we want to connect that in and get a reference to that and that but we need to readdress the fact that we didn't do that in here and we have our set checkpoint get actor location And we need to get actor rotation. And we need to set this variable. Plug that in. 
So no matter what, we always have a default location and rotation for our checkpoint. So now we're facing this way. So if we come over here and hit this, we die, get a nice cool death cam, and we're facing the correct direction again. And what about our checkpoint? Do, 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 do. Yay, we cleared a checkpoint. And boom, we just died. We're facing a totally different direction. And now we're, we're, our player is facing the right direction, but our camera is not. Uh, but our player is, and that's what really matters. So now we can run around. We can add in more checkpoints if we want to. Doesn't really matter. There's no checkpoint numbers that we need to deal with because it's just going to work because of the fact that it's there. So we get this checkpoint, and boom, we died. It's going to go back to the first checkpoint. And now we come over here. Yay, we just cleared another checkpoint. We can add in particle effects and all kind of cool crap there too. It's going to respawn us back at the new checkpoint. See? And if we went over here and checked this one again, um, you could also, if you wanted to, on the checkpoint, once this has been accomplished, you can delete it if you want to. Um, let's put in a delay of half second, just for shits and grins, and then this reactor. So that checkpoint will no longer exist. The player could no longer go back to that checkpoint and save. So we see it's there. We go through, we clear it, and it is gone. It's no longer there. But if we come over here and we die, the data was saved. So we respawn. We're in the correct location. So now if we die anywhere before the next checkpoint, we're always going to go back to that same location. The data is stored. But now that I've cleared this new checkpoint, that checkpoint now is gone. And if I come back over here and I die again, oh no, it sucks. We're dead. And then, poof, we're back to the new, uh, our newest checkpoint. You can scale the checkpoints as big, as small as you want. Everything is cool. Um, is that if you want, you can... Yay, make all kind of sound effects or whatever. Um, let's see what we got in starter content for audio. Um, we could do... Ugh, that's just terrible. Um, but yeah, you could do particle effects. You could do um, which are emitters. You could do... like The only ones we have is sparks and smoke and steam and fire and explosions ambient dust that kind of stuff but you can if you you want more cool effects um, also in the marketplace free um, you go in here to free epic games content and as you scroll through I haven't looked at the emission AR stuff Apollo 11 um, yeah, it's easier just to, to search for, um, uh, Infinity Blade Effects, to search for it, and I typed it in wrong, um, It's in the the permanent free collection of free, uh, free stuff from from Epic. Um, FX Variety Pack is free. There's pages upon pages of free assets in here. Um, and it's in here, I promise. I'm just spelling it incorrectly. Um, some weapons, that one's actually pretty cool, FPS weapons bundle. Um, every month they put up new free assets that um, are free for a limited amount of time. Or for, for that month. Um, 
but essentially it is oh, so many freaking things here infinity blade effects and yeah was it 454 materials 840 particles uh, yeah there's a lot of particle effects in here for different effects like that for your checkpoints or flames or uh, yeah it, it's really cool to, to check out um, like if you want like the bullet firing effect uh, fire I mean I use that for the dragon shooting flame uh, in one of the other projects that I did but yeah there is so many different particle effects in here that you can use and it's free and as long as you're using it for an Unreal Engine 4 project, it's free forever for you to use in any of your games, projects, for commercial, or whatever. Um, so if you want to use that for the checkpoint, that's cool. Um, I could just add to project and done. You see the progress right there. I've already downloaded the file, so it'll just um, add it to the project. It's just transferring files over. Try not to load up too many different things in here because, yeah, this is a temporary project that will end up getting deleted at some point. Unlike the, the other hundred or so that I haven't deleted yet. So it'll add to the project. And you can see the, the folder is already there. So just want to wait until it, it says it's done. And you'll be good to go. But I want to add that particle effect, I think, for our checkpoints. When we hit it, it does this cool effect. Initializing. Selling, verifying, cleaning up, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're done. So, get rid of that. Infinity Blade effects. Lots of uh, effects in here. Um... Let's see here. Is it maybe in gates? Fire? You know, ice? Really cool stuff. Um, and free. That's kind of cool. I wanted to see what that other one looked like. Um, let's close our player. Save our map. don't know why this is in the effects but there's um apparently a monster chicken that's in here <laughs> and yeah I think the uh, the meshes are actually there for the chicken um, a spike ball But yeah, there, there's all kind of different stuff in here. Um, abilities. I wanted that one particular particle. I don't know what it's called. That one looks kind of cool, too. It takes a couple minutes for it sometimes to, to go in. But it's cool to be able to have stuff like that that's actually free to, to play around with. Um, ambient. So, fire, um, fog, leaves, lightning, snow. We'll cover all that on another... Terminus looks pretty cool. Um, some main menu effects. Damn it, it's going to bug me until I find the actual one that I'm looking for. That's the thing, whenever you're, you're looking at some of these that um, are huge um, asset packs, Oh, is that it? No, but that looks cool. Lightning explosion. Um, I 
No idea. So I'm just going to grab one of them. Um, how long does this one last? Some last forever. They're permanent. Um, some last, you know, short duration. Sometimes you can modify them to where they do a certain thing and then they're they're done. So that one I think is just going to be. Um, yeah, it's not the one that I'm looking for, but I'll just pick whatever. I thought it would have been in Gates. But apparently not. Um, skills. So many cool particle effects. That one's looping. Um, If you don't have any questions on anything, just jump right in while I'm doing this. Um, you know what? I'm just going to use that one. So I already have it selected here, so all I have to do now is I'm going to spawn emitter at a location. Make sure I got enough room for it. I'm going to click this arrow since I already have it selected. The location that I'm going to use is that, might as well. And let's come out and save. And didn't do anything there because this wasn't that checkpoint. So as I walk over here, we get a little particle effect now that we've cleared a checkpoint. And that's cool. Cool enough. And we've already cleared the checkpoint, and oh no, we died. And poof, we respawn. We could put sounds, we could put particles, whatever we want for our respawn. We're good. And the only thing we're going to do now is just do our final wrap up of what else we did in this video which was the chair. So we're going to go to our broadcast studio meshes, grab our chair, go to zero, zero, and zero. And for some reason this chair is hovering. We're going to get rid of our pain pad. We're going to make sure we're on the ground. Close enough. Rotate it 180 degrees. Grab our gadget for our sit spot. Arrow's facing the wrong direction, so let's rotate it 180 to match up. And set the edge of the collision box right next to the chair itself. Now when we hit play, we can walk over here, and let's sit down on the chair, and we're good. We can stand up, can't walk until we're done, and there was much rejoicing. Alright, so what are we going to do on the next one? We need to sit down, why can't we sit down? Because we're hitting the wrong key, I'm hitting F key. Instead of E. So, what are we going to do on the next video? We can... First off, let's get rid of all these things. Leave our test map nice and empty. And since we don't need that there, let's poke it through the ground a little bit. So it's not visible. So, so far we've been able to um, sit down in a chair. We can die. We have a test method of causing damage and for healing us. Um, 
respawn system, checkpoint system. Uh, yeah, we, we've done a few things so far. We've added a couple asset packs in to show how to add in different asset packs. Um, I guess if we wanted to for the next thing would be to start combining some animations. And what I mean by that is as we're doing things, if we want to crouch down, we need to add the crouch. But we don't have a crouch for this character. We want to set it up as a toggle so we can do a crouch system, perhaps. Um, another thing would be to add in some animations. And I know I said I wanted to add in other animations for things. And I want to keep everything free. Unfortunately, I have things that are free that I got that were free for the month. There's free characters we could do later on. Free weapons we can add if we want to later on. Other scenery items. AI systems that are not free. Um, so, again, if you want to find out what other animations are available and for free, we can come over here to Marketplace. Go to Browse animations select price low to high and the other one that's currently free is that um, which kind of sucks no not the animation pack I mean, the animation pack is fine um, mocap basics anything that we can use off the bat. There was stuff that was free for the month last month that I really enjoy using, so kind of want to use them. A death, got a crowd, so yeah, we'll use this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the project, and it'll be there. And unfortunately, this is adding even one more layer of another animation. I mean, not another animation, but another... Um, UE4 mannequin skeleton. So in the next one, we're going to activate some of these as uh, maybe the crouch. And I don't know. We'll, we'll see what animations are in here. We already have a death. We know we want to do a crouch. Um, might be able to find one animation in here that we can use like an emote, like a high or a wave or something of that nature. Um, if you're wanting to purchase an animation pack that's well worth the money, um, I do recommend one that, besides the one that I pointed out that was relatively inexpensive. So, this is going to do its thing here. Um, let's go back to animations. Actually, let's go back to the library. This is going to take a few minutes, and I'm not worried about it because we're not going to open it up in this one anyway. Uh, God, here's Fart Knight, Battle Royale that I was working on, um, Submarine Warfare, it's my stream party, um, theater demo, uh, working on something for another for other people. Platformer game was kind of fun. Uh, a nice shooter template from MoCap Online. Um, fishing. I was actually doing some stuff with a chess game. It's kind of like a battle chess where when you select your character, tell them to do their move. Um, if there's somebody in that, that square, they will attack them. That kind of stuff. Uh, the dragons, that was kind of cool. The secret mines. Um, no idea what that was. Just so many different things that I've got in here that are half finished or partially finished projects. Um, animation starter pack is free. Definitely want to have that one. Um, if I, yeah, I'm going to even not just talk about it at all. Uh, custom movement was free. It's awesome, but difficult to integrate. Um, death animations for mocap. Eh, that's a long story on that one. Dynamic locomotion. Mm. Explosions builder, that one was free. First person story adventure, that one was free at one point. Um, 
the four evil dragons is free FPS assault pack was free but no longer is free really awesome especially when you combine it with the FPS weapon bundle which is in the first person shooter project we're doing um, the generic animation pack was one of the ones that I wanted to suggest and uh, pedestrian animation pack absolutely great they're not free though pedestrians Phoenix Anim Pack 3 this one was free last month and I'm sorry if you didn't get it then you really missed out um, I don't think it's expensive but damn it was good still is I can still use it because I got it last month um, it has swimming animations and we set up swimming in one of the projects you know, different sitting animations uh, different standing type animations of using phones and stuff like that um, so yeah if you you didn't get it last month you're really missing out even if it was just for the swimming animations and some of the other ones in here but it was free last month uh, the pedestrians animation pack absolutely great um, animations usually are a good way to go rolls and dodges was free just gotta keep checking that free for the month um, we've got five days or so left in this month it usually takes some five days to change it out for the the new free for the month but definitely keep checking weapon component was inexpensive um, so many cool stuff that was free for the month subculture girl got that one for somebody else and yeah you know, he disappeared shortly after and I haven't seen him since There's somebody that I thought was a friend and he just vanished I don't give a shit about the money I don't give a shit about a friend just disappearing and not talking for ages it's been months since I've heard from him I don't know if he died what you know it would have been nice if he's not dead and he would just stop by and say hey you're a dick I don't ever talk to you again but you know I, I could understand that uh, generic N NPC anim pack another good one but we put the bocap basics in here and we'll take a look at that in the next one we'll set up a crouching system but just check through the free stuff uh, be careful of what you get because yeah it's free not a big deal but you know some things are easier to work with than others all right I'm gonna close this one down and actually open one project um, hell I don't remember I think it was this one now anything was another one that I liked a uh, project of, of what I was tinkering with I've got projects that I just screw around with things to to learn new stuff Yes, we're past the hour mark. So yeah, this is one that was working on as a um, just a fun little shooter. All free assets, and free characters, free weapons. Just threw a hand grenade out. Reload animation, the sounds. I put in, you press the one key and I, you can spawn more bad guys. Um, get that flashlight. Um, you can change scopes. You can zoom in. Change your scope back. Why are you knocking shit around, boy? What's wrong? Pretty cool. Um, you can butt stroke. I didn't set up any damage. And I put in a secret mine. There's no targets left. They're all dead. So it's just going to sit there and fizzle until it runs out of time, and then it'll just self destruct. Um. Did 
larger map. Way not done. So you got a sprint animation. You know, your weapon goes down. You can't shoot while you're, you're sprinting. Um, you can also... Yes, reload. Chain scope. Um, hell, I made the damn thing, and I f forgot what the hell it was. Here's your grenade. There we go. You put on the silencer. Flash that on and off. Shoot your bad guys. Chain scopes. Barely hear him scream because he was too far away. And since the guys aren't allowed to walk out here, I get those secret mine in there. No! It blew up and killed a bunch of them. No! No! Peek a boo. No! Yo, what's up, man? You totally missed this project a while back. No! Secret mine. No! Secret mine. No! <laughs> secret mine. <No! laughs> I love those secret mines. No! And let's take the silencer back off. Yeah. Did almost all of it on streams. You know, they had AKs. Did all this with free assets, too. So, I mean, like I said, you got um, red dot scope. You can change out to um, sniper scope with zoom, with the mouse wheel. Change back. Got a grenade. I never did finish the timing on the grenade throw. Hey, I like that death sound. It's stupid. That's why I like it. Get silencer. Take the silencer back off. Different sounds based on whether the silencer is on or off. Um, you had the little nighttime map. Turn the light on. Secret mine. So these are actually using a death animation, but I thought this, was, this one was kind of fun. Um, and the project that I was doing on streams was um, somebody had requests for dragon with you know flaming breath and and doing damage with the fire and that kind of stuff. So I just threw it into a project that I was actually doing to test out the secret mines. Um, So, as you can see, the uh, the cylinder shape that's in front of their mouth, that's the area of effect where they do damage and where the flame's going to be. No, it doesn't lag in the editor. I mean, it doesn't lag when you, you package the, the, the game. You can see there's a snow particle effect on the player. So the flames, you watch your health bar, nothing, and then whenever it spits the flame out, I didn't do a death for the player yet, but you see it does damage whenever the, the flame goes over it. You know, when you package it, it plays smooth as hell. Um, got my first person camera. I don't have a, a gun set up, it's just like aiming. What it was actually doing was um, playing around with something else in here. Body shot, make a head shot. I just did the animation to let it know that, hey, it's been hit. But when you hit him in the leg, it, it reports back saying leg shot. Hit him in the arm. Oh, well, he's dead now, so it respawn, he, he despawns. Um, no, but there are animations for them to fly. Um, I put in, this is where I was testing the original Seeker Mine. It tracks him down.
then I did the uh, the cluster version, where it goes out, gets close to a target, splits off into four, and just goes out and just wreaks havoc. And then you got the uh, the airburst version where it just it jumps. For some reason, it, it double taps. Sometimes, not always. <laughs> and these guys ragdoll, so. But I was just playing around with the uh, the idea of a secret mine. And if you've got multiples out there, whenever the targets end up coming back as dead, or no health left, then it'll stop tracking. And again, if there's no target, it'll just sit there, do nothing, and then... I need to redo the AI for the, the Seeker Mine. Now that there are targets, I want it to, b before it self-destructs, I want it to actually go back to looking for um, a target again. And that's a cluster I just sent out. <laughs> and I like the Ragdoll version. No, no, I didn't give up. I just, I just said, you know what, I needed a break from everything. And I took a couple weeks and then just sit there and goofed off and started playing Division 2 a lot more seriously than I had been before. And was having fun. I was enjoying myself instead of worrying about a, a game or a project or anything else. And, you know, just, I had to do some me, I had to take care of me and, and do some me time. Um, I'm, you know, I've got a lot of uh, great people that follow my channel, and I know that it's probably detrimental that I haven't done any streaming in a while. So I'm trying to make up for it. This week I'm going to be doing a lot more. Uh, this is another little thing that I was testing out, but uh, kind of not happy with Cindy Studios right now because they're not responding to me. Um, with the uh, the farm pack. Um, let's plant some pl potatoes so I can plow it. Now that it, it's there, it's plowed, I can actually plant it. And I see the status that it's growing. Um, yeah, some meat time, yeah. Good luck trying to find any, uh, yeah, yeah, during COVID-19. We're going to leave it at that because there's some young ladies that are watching my videos sometimes too. But yeah, um, plant crops. Come over here and let's plow that one. Let's plant it. See, it's in a growing state. And after a while, it'll start sprouting. And then it'll get larger. And then it'll grow one more stage. Yeah, I'm growing you a new PC, my tater farm. And I can plow it and get rid of the, uh, the other ones. I haven't finished doing all the stuff on here, but was setting it up to where it was an actual harvestable, harvestable and plantable crop system where you could actually stockpile it and it would actually then um, get stacked in crates and a truck would come by and pick up and everything. I already had everything set up for a farming based game and that's what I was working on for this one. Most of you guys know that it, you know, if, if I come up with a cool idea for a project and you guys want the project, let it ride, you know, I mean, do what you want. And run with it. Um, the bank heist. Again, I, I stopped with it because of um, the fact that I, I, I understand COVID-19, they're not in the office and everything else. Make a bullet at home, gotta, just got to have a reloading press. I used to reload quite a bit. Um... I was doing this series and it was going well on, on this project here for the Bank Heist series. Great. And like I said they stopped responding to my uh, Discord messages. So, you know what? I'm not worried about it. Get your patrol car. Draw, and this one is forcing you to go into first person mode. Put 
from sample AI. I didn't do a full death. I don't like the, the idea of forcing that. Um, messing with a couple different variations off screen of it. Um, yeah, I used to make my own ammo. and the, Some people think, well, it's cheaper to... No, it's not always cheaper to make your own. Uh, when you're shooting precision, it's good to have the ability to make your own. Because you can adjust the, the powder weight and the bullet weight and how far it's seated in the, the casing and so forth. And you can do a lot of stuff with getting it to be more accurate. So what I was doing with was this was um you notice that you know the pistols in your holster, you can draw your pistol, you fire create animations. Um, actually had it where it was um whatever it hits, it's reporting back what it's actually hitting. It plays a particle effect at the location where it's hitting. But the animation with the pistol, the reload animations, it actually drops a um, magazine on the ground. When you fire, it drops empty shell casings on the ground. And of course you got the um, the flashlight. So yeah, that was that project. Um, yeah, you really hadn't seen much on the, um, and I uninstalled 424 and I made my clock project in 424. I got plenty of guns, so I don't know why I need to make my own at home. I built them from pieces parts, um, several of them, specifically AR-15s and and so forth. Um, voxel. There, there was a, a voxel project that I was working on um, where you could dig out the ground and that kind of stuff. And terraform. Um, not going to get into that one right now. Stream Party. This one is, and I, I keep doing updates on this one, and I haven't done it, uh, an update in uh, like three weeks because I haven't had anybody that's wanting to stick around and test. They come in, they pick my brain, they haul ass. You know, I love you guys and love helping people, but it'd be nice if people would hang around long enough to help me test stuff. So, um, yeah, it's hard to do a multiplayer to get it to, to smoothly turn and everything else and was having some issues with the targeting and and yeah the character creation thing you can select it right now it's just male and female I haven't set up the rest of the features in here um, so you can be grandpa or you can be grandma and the thing is if you're grandpa and let's just go into single player but this does work in multiplayer. Everything is replicated correctly. Um, so when you go in here, it'll load up. I need to do a loading screen. I haven't done a loading screen yet. So it's going to take a little while in the editor. It's instant whenever you, you do it in the built version, the, the actual standalone playable version. So we're just, we're just waiting on it right now. But so if you select to be the male character, it will be this character in there. If you join the game and decide you want to be grandma, you can pick grandma on the, the setup character and it'll actually be in there. It's taking forever right now. Um, I don't know why it, it sometimes just takes forever whenever it's in the editor, but when I package up the game and play it from my hard drive, bam, it's, it's right there every time. Smooth. Yeah, um, so now I'm Grandpa. Walk around town. I added in that. This is still the test map. I haven't finished my map yet. Um, so you can walk around town as Grandpa. Uh, I'm going to start adding down the sitting areas. Sitting is working correctly. Um, 
ceiling fan works. Sit down. Nothing on TV, so let's go somewhere else. Um, I don't know why it's so weird right now in the editor. Dude, just chilling on the computer. Dude, you got a black screen. You ain't nothing on there. It's smooth as crap whenever you actually play the uh, the thing, and not in the editor. Um, let's go to main menu. Go back there and play it in the actual map. Um, my map is nowhere near close to being done. As you can see, there's only two buildings. <laughs> So this is actually uh, on my main project, by the way. So yeah, this map has a lot to be left, uh, be done on it. Um, so we'll play it this way, and we'll play it in New Pi. So we'll do it this way. So a lot smoother this way. Um, yeah, it'd be pretty cool in VR. I just I don't have VR equipment to test with. Haven't been getting as many donations because I haven't been doing as many videos. Uh, it's my own fault. But then my bank account was hacked, and I lost all my money, and I finally got it all back. So, I'm just kind of sitting on it, not doing anything with it right now. Oh, shake that ass, Grandpa. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you can sit down in most of the chairs around town. I gotta do the, the timing thing on standing back up, but the jump I got minimized, so you're not able to jump over a lot of things. Um, still got the cell phone. You can pan around while you're on your phone. I think I did. I don't remember. I don't remember what I, I had for for lunch today. So, you know, I'm old. I forget shit. So, I haven't done anything with the bank yet, no money yet. Um, I haven't finished setting up the rest of the options on the phone. But as you can see, it's BBG Wireless, Beefalo Bark Gaming Wireless. Um, shows the correct date and the correct time. Correct to your personal computer, your correct time. So, if you look right here, 4.48 p.m., 4.48. It's 4.25.2020, April 25.2020. So, that's all correct. You can... I mean, this is your default dance. So, you can... Shake that ass. Mm, shake it, Grandpa. Yeah. Um, you can see you got an animation for when you're on the phone. But you can actually change your dance. Um, and churn butter. Mm, churn that butter. <laughs> oh, let's see. You can do that. Of course, you got to do this one. I got um, Amazon Prime, Netflix. I'm not paying YouTube for anything, so. Um, do the Macarena. Macarena. So all these are all replicated, by the way, um, with the dances. Um, I don't have a mask, so let's go buy a mask. Walk over here. I still haven't finished that mode yet. So you walk over here, got all the masks on display. Um, of course, I, I need to, to finish doing the mask system. They work, they replicate, they're fine. They're just like, if I put on, um, let's get the paper bag. Let's come over here. No, don't dance. Talk to the dude. Um, let's get the paper bag. Select it, exit. So you can see the grandpa's hat clips through there. I, I'm pretty sure I know what you're talking I'm pretty sure I've actually seen the movie. Um, or are you talking about the one with Ryan Reynolds? Or... Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. So yeah, the, the hat sticks through there. So, let's actually go in here to our character, take off her mask. Um, being that um, everything is set for multiplayer, you look in the upper right hand corner, or upper left hand corner of the screen, whenever I hit the G key, it shows that I'm the admin, I'm the server host. 
So since I'm the server host, I can hit one and go into on duty mode. And now I'm I'm the popo. In this case, I am FBI agent because I'm the server host, and I can teleport to the prison, and I can actually check on my inmates. I'll put some bunks in there and and actually have it where. Oh, well, I'll check that out later. So you can come into your office. There's still a lot more decoration needs to be done. This is still on a temporary map anyway, so. Yeah, I know Ready Player One's a movie, so. So yeah, check out the uh, the prison, check on your inmates. If you, you got somebody being a pain in the ass, you can send them to jail. You can teleport back out. Yeah, there, there's one with Ryan Reynolds that's supposed to be out now or coming out soon that's basically along the lines of um, he's having to go in and save the world inside the computer game or whatever. So let's actually play this in two-player new pie. Alright, so here's your client. So you can see as the client if they hit G key, it just reports back saying a normal player. Client 1 is a normal player. So they can't go on duty. They're not a cop. They can't do anything special. Um, but since, you know, I am the admin, I can hit G and it shows server admin in the upper left of the screen. If, you know, this is my tater farmer right there and I want tater to be, uh, a moderator on my server then I could actually open up my phone and I have a hidden button let's actually go back to client as you can see client normal player if he opens up his phone presses this button nothing happens okay nothing but now me super admin cool dude I'm the host I can go right here and click this button and I get a hidden menu and I can, you know, this is all going to change. Now I can actually use the mod maker gun, and I just tagged them. Go back into my menu, turn it back off. Now, Grandpa can have access to that secret button, and he gets a different menu because he's not an admin; he's a moderator, so he can go on duty. But his on-duty uniform he's a police officer because he's a moderator and you know you know admin he's a FBI guy God, damn. I don't know why it keeps breaking but for some reason the moderator can't go to the jail um, sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and I haven't changed anything but you know Yeah, you cycle on and off duty that way. Um, you can cycle on and off duty from the phone. On duty, off duty. Um, change dance to twerk. And what in the fuck? Everything was working great. And now everything wants to be damn bright. I haven't changed anything. Changed nothing. And things that was working perfectly fine quit working. <coughs> I don't get it. Sometimes Unreal Engine 4 just pisses me off. Um, come in here and go back to set up character. Let's be Grandma. Go to single player. Load the map up. Now we got Grandma. And we're going to wrap up this video. And... We're going to let Grandma twerk. Um, yes and no. Uh, the cars that I'm going to add are not going to be player controlled. Not in, in town. Thing is, you can go to a racetrack and you'll be able to, to then be able to go racing. Shade Granny. Look at that. Granny can twerk, boy. So, um... 
Oh, and there's one other thing. Hit the number five key, which is a hidden key. This will be actually put into the menu later. And what happens is you end up getting a zombie invasion. In this case, it's zombie cheerleaders, but I'll change that later. And zombies will have a melee attack, but for now, they get close, they will attack. They will do damage. So, oh shit, more coming that way. Um, there's different locations around town that they're going to spawn in. And what will happen is they're set to follow a specific waypoint for right now. They will travel to right here in the center of this intersection is where one waypoint is. And there's more of them there. Oh no, run from the zombies. Zombie cheerleaders from hell. I don't have a sprint turned on. I don't know why I'm trying to hold the shift key down. Um, but then they'll, they'll come down here. Then after a short amount of time, if nothing happens, then they just despawn. But if they lose sight and lose track of the player, then they automatically revert going back to their last checkpoint that they were heading to. If they never made it to checkpoint one, then they'll go all the way back across town to checkpoint one, and then look for checkpoint two, and then so forth. Or waypoints, not checkpoints, but waypoints. So they have a set of waypoints that they'll follow, and if, like I said, if they lose the player, lose sight of him or her, they'll just go back to what they were doing and trying to go to their waypoints. Um, I am setting up the swimming pool on the main map, will be set up to where if a player goes into the pool um, and they go into the deep part of the pool or whatever or they go to the beach and they get too far out in the water they'll automatically start swimming whereas this right here is too shallow um, something along the lines of I think I did it in this one <laughs> Yeah, we're about an hour past the wrap-up time of this video. But, just hanging out with my boy, showing off some stuff. Um, was it demo map or test map? I don't remember. Um, I'm setting up the swimming system. That's not it. That's the full map. Um, here we go. So, yeah, I like the skeleton dude. Sorry. So I took out the water plane so you could see that the uh, the fish were swimming around. Um, these are actually piranha. They will come after you. You get into the water and you can start swimming. And piranha will chase you. The shark will sometimes chase you. Um, got damn way shark. So when you get on dry land, you start walking again, but when you get into the water, you start swimming. You stop, and you tread water. Start back up, you swim again. And get away from me, shark. Yeah, okay, get back on dry land. Nee, 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 nee. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to set up an automatic swimming system. And that'll be done in the uh, the the regular games, to where you jump in the water, and you start doing that. Get away from me, shark. You bastard. <laughs> they don't do any damage, but it's still, you know, a thing. Um, on the full map, set it up to where when you come out here, jump in, you start swimming. I need to change the elevation of where you're swimming and be able to swim up and swim down. I haven't done all that yet, but just set up a basic swim system. Right now you swim underwater instead of being stuck on the surface. But as soon as you get to shallow enough water, you'll start walking again. And find some shallow. There we go. So it just automatically transitions between walking and swimming. Little dumb stuff, you know, like I said, I build these little side projects just to test out different features. Um, the golf game. Uh, 
Uh, 420. Um, the Cowboy game that I was working on. Gang Warfare from Cinti. Um, still got a lot of 420 projects in here. The 419 project. <laughs> um, prototype. Some other online feature stuff I was testing that was not ready for showing off. Um, I don't have 424 installed. That train thing is really awesome. I just haven't mastered using it yet. Um, yeah, 420 smoke break, right? I missed my 420 smoke break. Um... I'm going to wrap this up. You need to hang out with me on, on Discord here in a little bit. Um, I didn't want to make this totally public, but speaking of 420, um, most of you guys know that I, I'm totally anti-drugs. I don't drink, don't do drugs. I do smoke and I do drink um, more coffee than I should. Um, let's just close this down. But um, I am looking for some sponsors. And one of them is a coffee company. I've already kind of given up on another coffee company because they're just too awesome to respond back to the little guy. Um, so, yeah. Um, I won't know for a while with these people because they're. I just sent them a message, you know, just started talking with them this morning, so I don't know if they're, they're going to be open to it or not, but... Trying for a coffee sponsor. Good God, I haven't opened up 420 or this project in a while. Um, because of my shit internet, I don't have the ability to open up a direct um, IP address for doing my own quote unquote um, file hosting for testing. So I can't finish my ad system until I actually can afford to get an online hosting service. Sponsor me in general, the, the channel, because I'm going to be doing more gaming. I'm going to be do, doing more of the, as I can get enough people to, to get on, to actually do like what I was trying to do with the um, uh, Division 2 and other games, play games with people online, and then be able to talk about not just the game itself, but talk about how the game was designed, how the game was built, um, and how to make those same features from this game work in that game, in your game, or whatever. Like, playing The Division, and or Division 2, The Seeker Minds, or A Shield, or what have you, and how to make those work, and how to make the, the guns work the way that they do and vaulting over stuff and climbing through windows and whatever, you know. Uh, I think this is it. Um, I'm getting back to actually working on my streams now and actually streaming more. Like today, this is my third stream of the day on this this beginning project and just been going on and on and on over showing off other projects and things that you can do with Unreal Engine 4 and, and whatnot. Um, so this was a, a project that I was working on. You can use your mouse wheel to adjust the power. You can aim using your mouse. I need to put a little directional arrow so that you can see more clearly and then you can put and miss. Um, it automatically puts your power back to zero again, or a minimum power, and whenever you get it into the cup, you get a delay, and it automatically talk, uh, goes to, uh, talks, goes to the next thing. You've got a little putt sound. Um, I didn't know whether or not people liked, uh, see a golf game with the, a character standing over it. Adjust the power... It's got to be at a certain speed, slowed down, before you can actually hit the next putt. 
You can't just sit there and whack it, whack it, whack it, whack it. Setting up, uh, I was going to set up a, um, oh, still rolling, a golf, a mini golf template. You can't call it putt putt, you know, because the putt putt peoples get all butt hurt. You use putt putt when you're talking about mini golf. They own the world of putt putt, you know. You get that friggin' butt hurt over use of a name. Yeah, there are. There's a bunch of them out here already. Go to 750 on power. Go right there. If I need the arrow, it'll make it a lot easier. Ooh, there you go. Drop it in the hole. So yeah, uh, but I was gonna make, I wasn't gonna make a, a golf game. I was making a golf template so that you could buy it from the marketplace and be able to have the ability to create your own golf game, create your golf courses, things like that. Putt Putt is um, was a franchise of mini golf courses, and it became pretty well known as being like everywhere and just like just people will see a, a, a pistol oh it's a Glock or you know, you know whatever they they just a generic name for mini golf so people called it putt putt and it was spelled p-u-t-t p-u-t-t -T, instead of p-u-t p-u-t which you would think it would be but there's two t's on it and um Somebody released something and they called their golf course or whatever a putt putt golf course. And the people who owned the name putt putt sued this golf course and made them change their name. It's a mini golf course. You know, personally, I would just tell them to kiss my ass, but I'm sweating on shaders. This was an idea for, you know, showing themes of um, a mini golf game where, like, you hit the chest and the chest might open up or whatever and you got to go from point A to point B and when you get to the the cup it automatically teleports you to the next hole and um, you could also do stuff like in in this you hit the uh, the cannon and it goes in the cannon yeah they got butt butt hurt that's such a good way to put it and you come over here and then you play this hole um, I guess it'd be the same if, if you know, I have caught um, people using names that I that I've come up with that weren't copyrighted or trademarked, and one of them was uh, I had in my car stereo shop. I had years ago. Um, I managed a car stereo shop. Plus, I've owned my own car stereo shop. And anytime I I either managed or owned a shop like that, I had what I call Merlin's Coffee Shop. I'm not a big drinker, so I'm not going like, to have beer and stuff laying around. But, damn it, I love my coffee. And um, So I had what was called Merlin's Coffee Shop, and it's more or less just a uh, picnic table, and you know, or table and chairs, somewhere in my shop that um, set up, and you can just sit there and drink coffee, and relax, and talk about stuff, and I, you know, customers who want to you know, major installs. You don't want someone that's coming in dropping two and three grand on a stereo system to be standing on a counter. So you, I had a place where we could sit down and have coffee. And well, it wasn't actually a coffee shop. It was just like um, go and sit down somewhere and have coffee. If I had one now, I mean, I'd still be running one. But with this COVID bullshit, you can't do anything. Now this hole I had set up where you started up here, you chipped it, it went down to here, you had to put it up, go around, and then you had to cup right there. But we was just doing this as, um, you know, telltale for showing off. I had, like, the sharks in the background swimming around, and we have, like, the birds chirping. And... and different ways you could do this where you could actually chip the ball if you wanted to. A little parrot sitting there. Or you could just straight putt. And I was playing with different ways of setting it up. Instead of just was demonstrating. I wouldn't have released anything with the um, the Cinti stuff in it. But was setting it up to where 
the template was uh, something that I was going to put on the marketplace. But yeah, I, I found somebody else in, in Australia that was using Merlin's Coffee Shop as, as their name. I didn't have a copyright on it, so I couldn't really complain about it. But Beefalo Bart is a registered name. Um, it's been registered since, oh my god, um, 2012 or so. For a long damn time. Um, survival game kit, yeah, my own version of that with um, other stuff in there. Player build system demo, different shooter templates. So yeah, um, well, you can register a trademark um, and um, patents and stuff like that. I have uh, a friend as an attorney who handled everything for me. It cost me like a hundred bucks. But they, um, the trademark basically means that um, you can't call yourself Beefalo Bart, you know, or you can't open up Beefalo Bart Gaming. Those are mine. Why well, you'd want to, I don't know, but you know, whatever. Been using the name for a long damn time. I had another version of the stream party thing that I was playing around with other features of. And I had the Minecraft stuff on here too. Yes, if you saw up there, there was said the custom splash screen. Even for the editor, you can customize the uh, the splash screen for the editor. Don't restore. Um, not it. And this is just something else I was screwing around with. Yeah, I'm ready to shut down the stream here. It's we're hour and some change past the, uh, the stop point. But I was setting up a, a submarine warfare game. Um, I forgot the key today and changed the view. But um, you can see the torpedoes coming out when they impact. They play the sound and particle effects and everything else. And then when you hit another ship, enough time do the damage to him. Did some custom animations on it. Ship rolls over. And then, after a short delay, it just goes away. Two, I think it's four torpedoes, and... I don't know if you can see the torpedoes that are in the water, but, um... There you go. Um... Even cast shadows from the uh, torpedoes. I was going to make the ships actually animate and so forth, and uh, moving in the water so you have moving targets. And I just, like I said, I got, I got PO'd because, you know, I haven't heard back from Cindy Studios in two months. So I wasn't going to promote their products anymore until they could at least have the courtesy of responding back to me. You know? Yeah, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of here. Um, you have access to my, my dev chat, so I will continue the conversation that I wanted to say um, in there. The rest of you guys, I love you all. Thanks for watching the stream. Thanks for letting me ran for the, the extra hour or so after we're done what we were supposed to do. I don't mean how the second video I was done in seven minutes of what I needed to, to accomplish. But yeah, we got some cool stuff done on the project, and go from there. If y'all want to see more later on, let me know. I gotta finish doing some stuff around the house, but I wanted to, to talk to my boy Adlane real quick. And then after I get done with some of my house stuff, my ass is going back to Division 2, and I'm gonna go blow some shit up. Alright. Love you guys. See you on Discord, 